Hey everybody, welcome to Geekaholics Anonymous episode 131. I'm your host Rico, here with my co-host, Mr. Dane Cody. Mr. Dane Cody and I get together once a week, talk about video games, movies, TV, and or whatever the hell we like. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We uh, usually start the show with some what you've been playing, getting all news and stuff, public service announcements, and usually I uh, round out the show with a free-for-all. Um, but even before all of that, we have a little BS section uh, at the top of the show. And uh, if anyone was paying attention to my Twitter, you may have seen I had a little accident. Yeah, dude, what happened there? <laughs> I broke my first laptop. Uh, we had one of our guys at work do this the other day. Apparently, guys at my work do it all the time. Because when I went to go see the, I don't know what you call them, our service repair guy or on-site service center IT tech okay. guru. I don't know. <laughs> He's the guy who fixes and replaces and deploys all our hardware. Right. And he's like, oh. That's not that bad. And I'm like, well, it's busted. He's like, oh, yeah, some guys are here like multiple times a month. And I'm like, wow. Are you kidding me? I'm like, I, I'm amazed that for- at a certain point they don't almost like, okay, you don't get any more now. You're going to have to figure out how to do your job without it. Like, I, yeah, or that you would get punished or something. Yeah, or like, hey, you're going to have to start paying for these because I know if your laptop gets stolen, you, you get a day, what they call a day in the park. Really? Which is basically a day with no pay. Ouch. So, again, I guess a broken laptop isn't as expensive as a stolen laptop because it could be fixed. But either way, yeah, it was quite surprising. I've never broken a laptop before. I was just working at a job and I like fumbled a tool in my hand. And you know how you fumble your cell phone? Yep. And then you go to catch it. And then instead of catching it, you're like... Uh, hands just like end up <laughs> you end up hitting it and like sending it flying like 20 feet in the air across the room yep you know what i oh, mean oh yeah so i had a tool in my hand and i did exactly that but instead of sending it flying across the room i basically sent it flying like bullet traje- trajectory speed into your laptop straight into the into my laptop monitor oh, into the screen ouch it right into the screen and I'm like, oh, ah, uh, yeah, oof, yeah. Um, good thing I've done this job because uh, I wouldn't be able to do any more <laughs> without my laptop. Yeah, no kidding, eh? So, yeah, that was, you know, it sucked. Man, I probably would have been really, really upset if it was my personal laptop. Uh, I probably would have cried. <laughs> Thank God it was my work laptop. Yeah. But, oh, my God, I'm just like, now I'm like so like... When I'm using my personal laptop right now, because I just feel like I'm that like butterfingers, I'm like, ah, I'm so scared. Ah, <laughs> uh, come on! You've had your laptop for how long before something like this happened? You're good. That that one specifically for you. Yeah, there you go. You're golden. But yeah, oh, these things happen sometime. It was just like I didn't want to have to deal with it. I'm like, oh man, I got another job to go to. I don't have a laptop. All my testing tools are on there. Yep. This is going to make my day a little harder. Oh, yeah. But luckily, I had some time and was able to duck in. And literally, it was like a pit change. He's like, what are your credentials? Uh, What software do you need? I'm like, "Uh, this and this. And he's like, okay, just give me a couple minutes. Because he preloaded it with the, I guess, whatever. Yeah. Like Office. Well, I'm sure you guys have like a standard stack that gets installed on every laptop. And then certain guys want certain things on top of that. Yeah, he's like, whoop. And he's like, okay, I just need you to come up with a new password for your virtual smart card. And I'm like, doo, doo, doo. I'm like, cool, because I didn't even know what my old one was. <laughs> so that was kind of handy. So I actually know my <laughs> smart card password again. <laughs> uh, th- that's very helpful. Yeah. Sweet. And I mean, we, yeah. plus, I mean, not sweet that you broke a laptop, but you know. No, it was just kind of <laughs> crappy, not crappy. I'm like, oh man, thank God it wasn't my personal one. Well, I'm usually pretty careful with that stuff. So, kind of, I just like when he said like guys are there multiple times a month. He's like that I see. I'm like, wow, that's just mind boggling. I try to take care of it like it's my own. 
Yeah, I I'm the same way. I sort of I don't know. I, I I don't even like loaning my laptop, my work laptop, out to other techs at my company. No, like, I don't I, even I, want anyone to touch. Yeah, it. it's it's like I know it's the company's laptop, but it's like it's kind of like it's mine, you know. So I don't know. on the plus side, I got essentially a free upgrade because the newer laptop is the newer model. Nice, uh, nicer screen, uh, same memory and hard drive space, but. Uh, it's got a newer generation processor, like a couple Sweet. generations newer. It's just an i5, so it's nothing crazy, but yeah, uh, I can. It's definitely much snappier. Yeah, that's fairly standard stack laptop. for for like work laptops, i5s. So that was pretty exciting. Sweet man, it's a good news in the end. We just came off our super long week. Well, not it was a long weekend. I had you had a super day. long weekend. Which I, uh, I guess we can get into what you've been playing. I basically spent all day Friday um, playing Assassin's Creed. Sweet. Well, a good chunk of it. And actually I played a bunch of Destiny and rolled a new character. Yeah. But yeah, it was a whole day of no one was around. Oh, it was uh, the Adeline best. Was at, my daughter was at uh, my parents' house. And my wife was at work. She did not get Friday off. And I was just like... Um, in my underpants. Well, <laughs> I was in pajamas, but oh, okay, a little no. exaggeration. But yeah, I basically played games all day. It was t- that sounds like fantastic. my Monday. Oh, so fantastic! That was totally um, my Monday. Nice. Wife was your wife, wife had, at work. Well, she's yeah, she works in the yeah, U.S. Right. and that wasn't a holiday <laughs> for her. So not a holiday for her. No. So I was like, did they not get a holiday on Friday though? Nope. None at all. Was it like, wasn't it Veterans Day for them or something? Yeah, but yeah, the holidays are all weird down there. I guess they don't get a holiday because they have Thanksgiving coming. I don't know. That's weird. Uh, yeah, it's just it's the way it's set up down there. It's very different than ours. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So uh, nice. So you did a freaking veg day too. Oh yeah, and then I needed it. I needed it so bad. It was great. Yeah. I felt like I needed it too. I felt like I haven't had a good day where I just played games all day with no one bugging me. Yeah. No, it was great. I I switched between uh, Destiny 2. I played that most of the morning, and then I switched over to Assassin's Creed in the afternoon. Uh, so, so, what level are you at in Assassin's Creed, Rick? Eight, 18. Oh, okay. 18 and a half. Okay. Um. Yeah, according, I was just looking on my Xbox app because I was actually playing it, and that's why I didn't see your Skype call earlier. Oh, that's funny. Or uh, No, your text, sorry. You texted me, so we'd start the show, mm-hmm. and I was playing Assassin's Creed. Oh. Uh-huh. And I look up, and I'm like, oh, shoot. I just <laughs> meant to do one mission. Now it's half an hour later than I expected it to be. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm 18. Um Okay. I uh, basically, I don't know, it's hard to talk about where I am because it's kind of spoilery, but well, have you, this is here, here's this, here's I have my hidden blade, okay, and I've, unco- I've met a major player and uncovered the bigger conspiracy a little bit. Okay. I just got a peek under the, under the curtain a little bit, like, I don't really know. Have you, I mean, it's, it's, it's not... It's not really a spoiler. Have you uh, have you crossed paths with her? I guess. Yeah, that's the major character. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's so. That's kind of where the story opens up quite a bit more. Yeah. And you kind of you close ties on the, basically. I guess you'd call it the first act. There's no acts per se in this game, but no, not really. The 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 main act that got the ball rolling for the storyline for Bayek. Um, and of course, I've been playing. I ditched the PS4 version for the Xbox One X version, right? Um, which I purchased because um, I wanted to play something on my Xbox, <laughs> and I wanted to play the best version of Assassins. After playing it some more, I can definitely notice the visuals are a little nicer on the Xbox. Fair enough. Immediately not noticeable. Yeah, that, that's kind of what. So, I've like, heard. if you were to put them, if you were to put them side by side. Um, you know, not playing them, you'd have a hard time telling the difference. But when you actually play and feel the Xbox One version after a while, 
it, there is, it is noticeably clearer. Um, and honestly, on the PS4 Pro already, it is an excellent version of the game. So don't get me wrong. It's not like the PS4 version's crap. Um, I'm only the playing version. the regular version on the PS4. So yeah, for you, it would be probably a very noticeable upgrade. Just to even go to the Pro on a non 4K TV. Yeah, probably. But, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, like, there's overall. Still, I'm, I imagine it still looks freaking. Great. Oh yeah, it looks good. I'm not complaining. It looks fine. Um, and it runs pretty good. I mean, I'm sure I could have. I, I've heard actually on PC that it's a bit of a pig. A uh, friend of mine with yeah, uh, the Assassin's like, Creed games have been really bad. With like a 980 Ti, it was telling me the other day that he got Assassin's Creed and it is very much not running very well for him and he's not even running it on a 4k monitor he's running it on a 1440p monitor i think the so the open world the assassins games have always been pretty taxing because of the open world nature of them yeah i wouldn't say they're like amazingly optimized engines and that's usually what happens when you have these you know open Oh yeah, worlds with so much stuff going on, AI and interactions with the you know the NPC characters and living their lives and doing their things is usually engines like this are usually a little, little more rough around the edges. Yeah, exactly. So, but um, yeah, man, oh, I'm really liking this game. So am I. It um, is it's, very surprising it's my, to me. It, actually, it, it, I, I like I. I don't know if it's my. F- it might end up being my favorite Assassin's Creed game. Wow. Because right now I really like the loop of, you know, I'm doing a lot of side quests. And like we talked about last week, uh, Bayek is essentially a freaking Egypt cop. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> like he's ba- he's basically like a peace officer, policeman, uh, roaming around Egypt, helping all the people. Oh, they, my son is, uh, you know, he got kidnapped by these guys or this guy's missing or these hippos killed all these farmers and all kinds of weird random shit. Yeah. Or, you know, oh, these bandits, uh, robbed us and <laughs> you're dealing with stuff like that. Of course, these are like the side quests. So, you know, some of them are a little throwaway, but there's still, there's still fun. I like the loop of you know, finding the area that you need to go to. Using, uh, it's Senu, right? The bird, I think? Yep, Senu, yep. And, uh, you use, uh, his, you know, his literal eagle vision flying over encampments or caves or ruins and locating enemies, locating treasure and so forth. And then, you know, you know, sneaking into the camp and essentially assassinating everyone or going whole hog just killing everyone you don't have to do stealth like that's the one that's thing that i've that is actually game. really appreciated about this game is that i try to do the whole i'm gonna go in all stealthy and then when that goes to shit i just i just go for it murder. And i just murder everybody yeah and in the ability tree you can put points into getting bonus experience for stealth kills you know, which, so if you're playing stealthy, you're getting a uh, benefit from playing stealthy, or you can put points into the combat tree, which give you extra points for uh, executing guys with your overkill ability, mm, which yep. is if you were playing uh, aggressively and just going straight up combat as you fight and do combos, it builds up your overkill meter. And then basically uh, it's like an instant insta kill. Well, not necessarily. Not depends. necessarily. It depends it, on the situation. Yeah, it, 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 it won't kill like a captain, but it'll kill most other peons in one hit. Um, it also won't kill the Phalak guys. Yeah, well, those guys are even above uh, captain status. Uh, yeah. I... Um, those guys are basically um, what Dane's talking about is after a certain point in the game, uh, the baddies basically employ these high level assassins to go after you because they're aware of your existence and it's like okay yeah um we're gonna send people to kill you and they're like scary big tough guys i don't think i've seen one lower than level 22 the the first one in the first area is level 20 
20. Okay. I haven't seen that guy. I've run into, I guess the area I'm in, I've, I've ran into a guy that was the other, the next area is mid or high twenties. And I, uh, I didn't even bother fighting him. I was just like, yeah, I'm jumping on my horse and I'm out. Peace. I had the first guy in the first area. Here, Cause here's how, as I've learned, here's what happens. You're doing a big stealthy mission in one of those area in one of the big uh like fort areas and i was doing the whole where i had to sneak in and kill one of the guys and i did that but then just after i i that happened one of the guards lights lit one of the fires and when you light the fire or when they're, when they light the fires, they bring in reinforcements and essentially when they light the fire. So if you're in a situation where you're attacking one of the forts and one of the guys lights the fire, that essentially signals one of those mercenary guys in your, whatever the one is in your area, it essentially alerts him that you're there and he will start making his way there. And if you hang out for too long with, you know, killing dudes and getting into shit, they will, he will show up. And so I was unaware of this fact and I was fighting away, doing my thing. And I was like, oh, I'll just, now that I'm not in stealth anymore, I'll just continue cruising through this whole place and I'll kill the guards and the captains and stuff and I'll continue on my merry way. And then as I was doing that, (laughs) <laughs> one of the phalac guys showed up and i was, he pretty much at the time i was level 15 i think or 14 somewhere in there and he was level 20 and he pretty much two shotted me with a bow and then ran over and smoked me over the head once and killed me and he was only level 20 yeah. and oh, wow. i am now level 22 and I have oh, since boy. gone back and picked a fight with that guy and lost. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. They're, I know they don't, a tougher... Because the thing is, is they don't... They fight like you. They yeah, you they ha- can do shield breaks. Break. They can do... Yeah. Every, like, they, they do all that stuff that you do. They do overkill attacks on you. Yep, it, they compare you. Exactly. They are way... Like, fighting them is completely different than fighting even a captain or a, or one of the top guys in a in a, any yeah. of the other areas. I haven't fought one, but I imagine they're tough. I just ran. Because uh, the game warns you when they introduce that mechanic of those guys oh, yeah. in the in the game. They, like, tell you they are very powerful. Yeah. And I and figured difficult. I was like, oh, well, I'm, I'm like, level... I'm well, two yeah, levels ahead old, of him yeah. now. Like, I'm... That makes sense. And I'm equipped with legendary... A legendary shield and a legendary sword. And, like, I've got all this legendary gear that's all my level. So, I'm like, oh, I'm... I should be golden to like take this dude on and then I mean I definitely fared a lot better than the first time but uh but yeah he still whooped my ass so it uh I think I feel like if an enemy has a level that you can see and not a skull that you can kill them but it may be difficult obviously if they're higher level than you yeah uh most like I've been really I've been getting sidetracked. I won't lie. I've, I've, it's oh, been God, so yeah. hard for roaming. me not to. That's all I was doing the last hour was roaming around trying to find uh, synchronization port points around the map. Yeah. So I'm like, I've done so far every single side quest that I could do, uh, since the beginning area. So every single side quest that I've done up into, and there's actually, I think, two that I've got left that are open in, like, kind of the area that I'm in right now. Um, so, like, I've just been, yeah, so that's, that's partly, I think, why, like, you and I are probably very similar to where we're at in the story would be my guess like by judging by what you're telling me you might be a little bit behind me i don't know but like where you're coming up to there's like a ton of storyline quests that i'm supposed to be doing right now is flagged level 18 yeah i've i've done okay so i'm probably one step ahead of you then 
So, because yeah, it gives you the point that we're at. It gives you uh, multiple objectives, and some of them are clearly like in the twenties. Yep. One's eighteen, and I think the other one's nineteen or maybe twenty. Yeah, there's there's like four. And I think the top one's like twenty five or something like that. Um, so where, yeah, cause where I'm at, it's level 18 and it's sort of the first part of that I've finished. So it's like a couple parter or like, cause some of the missions, when you do the quest lines, there's multiple parts to them before they sort of finish that part and then open a different one. Um, so I just ended up in, what the hell's the name of the city now? L- L- Lopolis or something like that. Um, essentially, you I go to know. Sesu and you do. I did all the missions there. Yeah, that's where I am right okay, now. Okay, yeah, because you talk to the I one guy and the, he gives I don't know you, if that's the right. I don't know if that's the right name, but that's the little town that like everyone's like basically being impressed, right? Yeah, yeah, and you get like when you you talk to the one dude and he gives you. I think he's got four missions four side quests that you can choose to take from him when you first meet him if you go Mm -hmm. into like the back room and he's like hey and you have an option to take all the side quests if you want yeah yeah i took all those and i finished them all and then i went from there to so then i i finished the main quest in that area which took me to another city yeah that's and that's where i'm I'm at. at is where I is at that next city okay. now. So I'm like literally a main story mission behind you, but you've clearly done some more side stuff to get the level. I've done 22. so much side stuff. I even went back to the main city and did the level 15 side quest. The starting. Oh, there's a uh, bodyguard. I think it's called in Alexandria. The, yeah. Mean? There's like, it's called the last bodyguard. It was a level 15 quest that, and like I was only, I don't remember like what level I was at at the time when that I was in that area. And I was like, Oh, well I'll I'll have to come back for that or whatever. And I did. And I went back and did that. Um, I really like the, we're kind of going off the rails here and beating around the bushes with quests. Uh, sorry people, but just don't want to spoil anything. Yeah. That's the hard (laughs) thing is it's hard to talk about this game, especially story wise without spoiling any of the story. Cause so far I've been uh, really impressed with the story. It's been really good. The, in the environments are so cool and varied like Alexandria, the main city is really neat. I've like, I've spoiler alert. There's pyramids. I've been to the pyramids (laughs) and that whole area is really cool. And I've just been roaming around on my horse and, actually avoiding fast traveling because i find the world so cool it's everything's so picturesque i I end up stopping and screwing around with the photo mode in the game oh yeah it's that's fun i don't know it's so dumb did you see that clip that i retweeted from that one guy hey man i may or may not have done that a few times that's freaking brilliant so (laughs) someone tweeted a clip of uh the game um they were i guess on a stealth mission Inside of a house. Oh, I don't guess. This is wh- exactly what they did. Yeah. They were in a house on a stealth mission, and they clicked into photo mode. The thing with photo mode is it actually lets you move the camera in-game. It essentially uh, pauses the game <laughs> and then allows you, you to, mode. to fly around. And I, it's like to be fair, I don't know how far... You can't go very far, but you okay. can go far enough to peek around corners and investigate multiple floors immediately around you in a building. I so have you totally done to- that. You can totally freaking like wall cheat it's using awesome. the photo mode. It, uh, it's hilarious. It's great. Uh, it's ingenious. I don't understand why I've never thought or seen this before. Because this, you could literally do this in any game. But I guess most games don't have like the indoor environments where this would be as useful as in assassin's creed yeah but that's that's freaking hilarious that's like mind-blowing i've used it a couple times now yeah um, there's been there's I been think, a few times where it it, my, it made sense my bird to um sinu or whatever the hell his name is he's pretty your bird uh he isn't he is an eagle of some sorts I he's think, a hawk pretty sure he's a hawk but yeah he a hawk okay anyway he Basically, you push up on the D-pad, and the next scene, you're just you're flying in the air. And he basically um, gives you an aerial view, like as if you had a drone. And he tags enemies and treasures for you. And he highlights stuff of interest. 
And as you, like I think Dane mentioned last week, as you find synchronization points, his perception gets better. So he so, so he picks up on stuff faster, yeah, and faster, deeper, so like so he'll notice things um, through more layers essentially like deeper on mm, un- so, under the water yeah, tre- or underground yeah, like all that kind a, of stuff a treasure in the ruins uh really deep uh he'll be able to highlight it which is and it, like it's amazing it totally helps oh yeah um and like we said before it, it's so much better than like just that detective vision that they used to have in assassin's creed where everything goes all matrixy and you're just seeing through walls and stuff um it's, I really like it. It's, it's a cool implementation, uh, of that same ability, but like just a little twist that makes it more realistic. Then again, <laughs> I don't know how your bird talks to you and tells you where everything is. Yeah. But you're like, oh, I'm just going to mark this guy. And now I'm going to be able to watch him through walls. And you know, it's, it's all good. <laughs> Video games. It's, it's a great way though that you can keep track of guys because you can mark them all. And then at least you can see them where they are on and the map, how far away they who, are. Like it. Who doesn't want to be a bird? Like, come on. <laughs> and it, it works out really well. It's a good system. I, I really enjoy it. The, um, obviously, I've gotten pretty good at the combat with shield breaking guys and parrying. And actually, I got a legendary. Is it legendary yellow? Yeah. I got a legendary. I want to say a hunter, not a hunter bow, a warrior bow, which is basically like a shotgun. <laughs> Yep. It shoots four arrows at once. Yep. It just wrecks guys. You got to get close, so like, though. Like you said, it's like a shotgun. Yeah, no. It's, even not close, this one is so powerful. It's, yeah, it's not long range, but like, I don't have to be like standing right in front of him. He could be across the room from me. Right. And they'll still kill him. Actually, I've killed multiple, like two guys standing next to each other. With oh, him. yeah. Oh, definitely that. <laughs> It's a pretty awesome weapon. I find I've got, got um, I find for myself I've been using the hunter bow more, but I keep one of those bows in my second slot. Yeah. So you can easily switch between your bows and your melee weapons. And so I keep one of those in uh in my secondary slot for my bow and it it yeah, comes in so... handy for when those guys get really close. The combat is varied by the type of weapons you hold. So you've got your swords, um, which all pretty much play the same, though they may look different, like curved swords and straight swords, like your classic, like Roman copper sword, or your, you know, your more e- Egyptian curved blade type deal. Um, and you also got daggers, so you could be dual wielding, which is more of like a fast slashing combat like it just changes your move set completely and of course you've got your ranged uh spears uh your heavy blunt oh, yeah. objects there's, like, there's like huge weapons maces as well. and stuff mm-hmm. and they all and they all control different so i'd say there's at least just between those weapon types i think at least four distinct if not maybe five distinct combat styles just depending on what weapon you have equipped yeah uh, so it's not all the same attack animations. It's not just you can play uh, differently depending on what kind of weapon you like, which is kind of cool. And then with the bows, there are like also again like four or five different bow types. Oh, and they all the play very bow. differently. Mm, I have, like right now I'm using the warrior bow and the predator bow. Like I said, the warrior bow is kind of like a shotgun where basically when you pull it out, you've got like multiple arrows like. That you fire all at once. Yeah, essentially not just four arrows at once. Your predator bow is a long range, kind of like sniper scope kind of bow. Yeah, it almost Um, feels a little bit like a sniper rifle. You actually get like more of a crosshairs and it, yeah. yeah. And it's a quick, it's a quick shot. Um, also, if it doesn't you, even take it doesn't take very long to draw either at all. No, and if you level, there's a there's a one of the perks that you can get for I got it. That perk <laughs> is when you release it. If you hold the button down, you can essentially like you, you can you control, control it like a you can missile. Bullet, <laughs> you can bullet time your arrows yeah. and like <laughs> literally uh, do some after touch, and they become heat seeking missiles. Yeah. yeah, not so useful if the target's close to you, but when a target's really far away, it's kind of fun to do it's pretty awesome you can yeah it's so that's why i've been using the predator bow because that's pretty hilarious uh ability um but 
oh man, what did I do? I did. I found the what do they call that place? The arena where you do the chariot races. I did some chariot races. I haven't found the gladiator arena yet, though. No, I, I think it's in a different there. city. Um, I'm looking forward to that because I'm pretty sure I'll sink some time into that. But like, yeah, there's a whole like t- racing, um, like chariot racing tournaments that you can enter and go up the ranks. I haven't actually um, done any of those yet. There's a there's a whole quest line where you can end up being like, a, oh, you could become a jockey for one of the teams and become. I guess sort of famous in the the chariot races, just totally like side thing. I I didn't continue. I, I got a little f- sidelined or um, sidetracked with that quest line, but I kind of left it on hold for now. See, it's but interesting. I I've the finished, chariot races. I essentially finished that whole quest line from the side quest perspective, and it actually didn't make me do any of the actual racing. Um, yeah, the, you have to listen to the one guy, your buddy that you end up meeting there from your hometown. <laughs> he he said, oh, to kill some time, you can go. Yeah, blah, yeah. Blah, blah, or one of the guys he's with. So I'm like, okay, I'll go over here. And, and it's like you go up to the door and it's like enter, blah, blah, blah. So I hit the button and it's like, oh, training mode. And, yeah, I saw the – if you go to the – yeah, if you go to the arena, you can – I saw that. Um I wasn't sure if there was actually like a like a, a separate one because there is a whole sort of series of side quests that are to do with that stuff, but don't actually ask you to do any racing, which was kind of interesting. Yeah. So I went and did a little bit of racing because I'm like, hey, I'm here. I may as well check it out. I'm like, this is kind of cool. Sweet. You can like you can basically slam into the other chariot uh, riders and try and make them crash. Um, you can try your horses can trample like if you're behind another racer, your horses can trample their chariot, oh. and then they they do like the full gladiator where their chariot like smashes and the driver gets like ejected like flying in the air, um, which is kind of funny. I don't think you can kill everyone in the race. I don't know if more racers just appear. I haven't paid enough attention to that. I don't know. There's an like achievement you, for destroying a chariot. So yeah, I did get. I have destroyed a chariot. So I've destroyed multiple. <laughs> um, you apparently you can even drift the chariots oh, around yeah. the corner. Um, That's awesome. It's kind of funny. I find uh, I found drifting ended up screwing me up, but I'm sure if I got used to the controls more. Um, it would be more useful, but man, there's just so many different things you can do in this game so far. I, I haven't done a single, uh, eavesdropping or tailgating stupid mission. So that's oh, nice. Oh, thank God. Those were my and, least favorite missions by and far. And again, like we uh, said, I haven't had a mission where being detected has failed anything. It just gets me into, okay, now I got to kill a bunch of guys until there's no guys that have seen me kill all these guys. That's actually one thing I will say that I really appreciate about this game is that when I when I'm going into a fort and maybe this will change the higher levels that I get but when I go into a fort and I get seen by a guard it doesn't mean especially if uh especially if I kill whoever was going to try and run off to set the fire but even if multiple people see me and they kind of start yelling and hey it's not like the entire base comes rushing no, to only me. Only guys within earshot. Yeah, and only the guys that see you. And it's really nice because there's been a few times where I've thought, "Oh man, I'm so screwed now." Like this, this here we go. Yeah. And then I've managed to kill a few guys, and the the other half of the base and then you can, was yeah, just you can start sneaking around. Still. Yeah. And that's that's been like so nice. Um, so that was a yeah, like, very very happy change. Like that exact mechanic. It's like the opposite in Wolfenstein too. <laughs> if one guy sees you, you're effed. Everyone in the base is alerted, and it's like, okay, well, you're not stealthing anymore. You're just murdering everyone. Yeah, that game, of course, is not really <laughs> stealth. Isn't its forte to begin with? But it's annoying that you can't just kill that one guy. Uh, you know. It doesn't matter. The other guys can be like a kilometer away. Yeah. But every every enemy in the base knows as soon as one guy yells. Right. Ugh. That's kind of annoying. Stupid Nazis. But yeah, man, I all I want to do is play Assassin's Creed. I'm really liking it's it. It's really it, good. I was super torn on Monday playing games between 
playing more Assassin's Creed and playing more Destiny 2. It was like, I wanted to play more Destiny 2, but I wanted to play more Assassin's Creed, and I, I had to choose. And it was... It's a huge game. Oh my gosh, it's so big. The world is ginormous. Like, I have, like... Un- I don't think I've even covered a qu- uncovered a quarter of the map or the areas in the game. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's like, about right. And I've been playing for like 14, 15 hours now. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's about right. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm so happy for those guys to have seemed to have righted the ship on this. Though Syndicate was good. Um, yeah, Unity was the play. abomination. Didn't play I liked, any of them. I liked Syndicate. Um, I heard the story but, in Unity was quite good, but the game uh, itself was just I, super, bu- super bugged. I know when I played Syndicate, um, I think I was maybe burnt out. Yeah, you know, I, I actually think that, that a large fatigue. reason why this game, you know, people have said like, oh, this game is doing so well now, uh, you know, oh, they must have really done something new to write the ship. I, I, well, I don't disagree with that because they've definitely done some amazing things and helped write the ship. And like, this is definitely the most I've played of an Assassin's Creed game since the second one. Um, I think that a large part, part of this also had to do with the fact that they skipped a year. So it was two years. So yeah. it wasn't like you just pl- finished playing an Assassin's Creed game that you put tens of yeah hun- hundreds of hours and do exactly. So finally, it was like there was a long enough time for you to actually go, "Hey, I could really go with playing an Assassin's Creed game," and and I think that has a huge amount to do with with it versus just them writing the ship. Um, and I kind of wish that more games would maybe think like, hey, maybe we should go on to a two-year cycle instead of a yearly cycle. I, f- this- I feel like with this yearly cycle with some of these games, like, I'm so burnt out on some of them. Like, I, yeah. I, like, this Call of Duty, I I think I'm going to skip this one. I know a lot of people skipped last year's, which is actually a shame because, uh, like, yeah, last year's game last was year- great. From what I've played, I like last year's way better than this one. Um, But this might be Not the first the one, and, and I just... I. I feel, yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I'm kind of burnt out on the Call of Duty stuff. Like, the, the, the multiplayer is better in this version of Call of Duty. Uh, it feels like Modern Warfare with an old school skin on it. But, uh, co- campaign wise, I'm just like, meh, this is so samey. I've done this all before. Yeah. Um, and whereas in Infinite Warfare, I thought the campaign was freaking awesome last year. I really liked the campaign. Um, but now we're going off the rails. <laughs> yeah, Assassin's Creed Origins, man, it's dope. It makes me... I'm really enjoying it on my Xbox. Uh, I'm... I feel very happy with the system, especially playing this game and going forward, uh, getting more multi-platform games on the system. That's awesome. It's pretty, and it plays good. That's great, man. I want to go play more. Yeah, I... Um... I had my, my mother-in-law was in town this weekend, so it kind of gave me, you know, her and my, my wife were spending a bunch of time together, so it kind of gave me an, actually an opportunity to spend a ton of time playing games. So, like, <laughs> a bunch on Friday night, I played um, Super Mario Galaxy. Um, Odyssey. Odyssey, sorry. Super Mario Galaxy. <laughs> Super Mario Galaxy Odyssey. Um, and, then, and then, yeah, um, because... She was staying in my office and had all of her stuff and kind of was like sort of set up in there as like her room. Uh, I couldn't really use my computer. So kind of left me no choice but to play on my PS4. So it and kind of worked Switch. out great. And, yeah. And, and my Switch. Exactly. So I, I ended up putting a ton of time into Assassin's Creed over the, uh, over the course of the weekend, which kind of really like you said really made me realize how much i enjoy it and i'm now i'm i think playing the first person shooter and the third person action game was a great mix as well yeah because it's they're different enough that i'm not getting burnt out on one or the other which is really nice so because i finished the story mode and destiny on was it saturday night sunday night So Mm -hmm. I finished the story, the main story in Destiny, which of course, like, then unlocks a ton more in the actual game. Um, 
So that was cool. I thought the story in this was so much better than the first oh, game. God. So much uh, better. Like, like, don't get me wrong. It's not a great story, but compared to the first game where it just seemed like... It's a story yeah, that makes sense. Exactly. And has a good conclusion. And yeah, and it, you feel good about it. And, and it. The story in the first game is just nonsensical. Yeah, it's like it's got all these different plot threads going all these different ways. And then all of a sudden, and none of, and half none of them, them really pay off. Yeah, half of them are they just stop going anywhere with them. And then they just kind of, oh, the game ends. And you're like, what? What the hell was that? Um, so at least this one made sense. It was a good story. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I liked. So much about that game is so good. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty decent story. You know, I've I've beaten it five times now. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> and rolled and rolled my sixth character. Uh, over the that's weekend. hilarious. Yeah, no, uh, I now it makes me want to play through it as a as a hunter. Um, now that I've played through it as a warlock, that's what I just made was a hunter. So and I've just hit what am I at now? Like two? I think I'm at two sixty four power right now. So you could do it. You could attempt to do a nightfall with me and Trevor. So I'm I'm getting there. There's 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 a bunch of stuff I want to do to kind of bump some stuff up and and continue that. But uh, yeah, I know that that game continues to pull up my time. That's for sure. Oh, yeah, that game's freaking awesome. So um, speaking of Destiny, uh, it's going to come up in our news a couple times, but. Um, they updated the NVIDIA drivers. Oh, yeah. Which some, it says for some users will see uh, performance improvements of like up to 56%. Wow. Uh, I can say I noticed uh, that my frame count has gone up greatly. Hmm. Uh, at least 20 to 50 frames a second. Wow. Yeah, which is pretty crazy. It's a pretty significant um, jump. Considering the game is already running, like the worst running place for me is the tower. Hmm. Okay. And yeah, I can it's, see that. It's the tower is still. I'd be going between seventy and ninety frames per second, and right. now it's like now I'm seeing eighty to over a hundred. Wow. Like in any of the worlds and missions, and I think I talked. To, pretty sure I talked about this before. I'm getting like low hundreds to high hundreds. But the tower was seemed to be the most taxing. I'm guessing because there's tons of people there. Um, but obviously, uh, there is immediately noticeable, like different. Like I said, twenty frames plus or minus, right? Mm-hmm. Wow, that's, that's kind of cool. That's, I, lo- I love it when games get. That's the one beauty of PC that you don't see so often with console. Is like performance. You get there's always performance improvements on PC that seem more frequent than console ones, right? Yeah. I mean, I think that's like because one day you turn on the game and you get all these free fun, new upgrades. Yeah. I mean, I think on, on PC, it's a matter of them actually being able to find optimizations and stuff elsewhere. Yeah. Whereas on console, they kind of been working with it since the beginning. Yeah, It's, so lo- it's, not... it's locked down. So they've already squeezed all the juice out of yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Um, I beat Wolfenstein. Oh, wow. Very nice. Wow. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's I, pretty much what I've heard. The story is pretty awesome. You've probably heard about the ending credits music. It's fucking terrible. <laughs> like the song they choose for the ending credits is really bad. Really? Um, it's still very open to obviously like a, a next game. Okay. Uh, it was a pretty satisfying ending. Well, as I understood, so. they'd mentioned something about they'd sort of planned it to be a trilogy. Yeah. The, the story. They get to so. do that. Uh, it's Bethesda. They don't, I don't know. I've known Bethesda to shut down studios or do stupid shit like that, even if Wolfenstein 2 didn't do very good because it's single player only without loot boxes and other BS. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure they would still would like eat it and make the third game to complete that series as it, you know, a thank you note to the fans. Um, we did talk or I talked about the campaign a bit last week or the week before. Right. It's solid. Probably not as awesome as doom. Cause doom had that more satisfying run and gun and melee decimate enemy mechanic. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that doesn't exist in this per se. It does. You can run around and butcher enemies with like uh, 
melee combo executions and stuff, which are, you know, quite graphic, but the, there's no ammo and health generated like in Doom, like that gameplay loop that Doom, the Doom combat had. Mm-hmm. It's super solid. The weapons are not that exciting. So it's still like solid, but man, Doom, like comparing it to Doom, Doom was so fucking good. The thing that do- sucked about Doom though, which is like the opposite of this game, I didn't think the Doom story was very good. Like, it was serviceable, it was fine, whereas the story and the characters in this game are really good. I feel like the the Doom story really was dependent on how much of the side stuff you were willing to sort of read and look into. Yeah. Like, there was a but, lot of really cool stuff that they'd added because there was that. Because no, there, was, there was no characters in that, right? Yeah. Really? Besides the main... Doom guy. Daddy and some setup stuff, but like... There's a lot of characters and there's some very interesting um, scenes between, you know, BJ and the Resistance characters and the enemies and so forth throughout the this campaign, which are like a bunch of holy shit moments, like, like really holy shit. Like, <laughs> wow, holy crap, that just happened? Yeah. Um, which is really awesome. But then it's like. The campaign isn't like crazy amazing. So, um, still a solid game. I think it's definitely worth playing. Um, but you know, if you don't have a lot of money burning a hole in your pocket, uh, I, I would say wait for a sale. And I think on Black Friday, this game is going to be quite cheap in a lot of places. So, um, yeah, it could be. Yeah, I'd say it's worth playing. There's some, like, there's some unbelievable scenes in this game. That are just like, wow. Holy crap. Yeah, that is that is very much what and I've there's heard. Some, and there's some polarizing stuff. And super graphic stuff, right? Like, yeah. really graphic stuff. Um, but overall, it's pretty good. You know, it's a solid shooter, not an amazing shooter. But the story is what you're here for. And it's got a freaking solid story. Very hmm. solid story. Fair enough, man. I, so, like yeah, I, that's off my... I just, I've heard so many good things, and I'm... I'm going to maybe see if I can pick it up. I know there'll probably be a Steam sale over the Christmas uh, break there. And, man. And I don't even I mean, mean like that I want to pick it up when it's yeah. 50% off. I just mean like, you know, even a little something would be uh, would be helpful. Well, there's so much stuff right now. I just managed to magically sneak it in and beat it quickly. I don't know how I did that. I've heard that it's definitely shorter than the first one, like quite a bit shorter. Because the first one... I don't know how long it took me to beat, but I want to say it was around 10 hours. Because I will say that first game probably is long. Closer to, probably closer to 8 hours. Yeah, see, and I, I'm I don't... past that by a bit already on the first one, and, I, yeah. and I'm halfway through. Um, I was going to say... Like, there's some side stuff to do. Like, you can go back after you beat the game. Um, and there's still more side stuff you can do because you can go back and visit locations and go on like assassination missions and stuff. Right. But I was just like, eh, I'm not gonna do any of that. Yeah. I'm not I'm not platinuming this game per se or getting all the achievements. Well, especially on PC, like, <laughs> what are PC achievements? They're they're all pointless anyway, <laughs> you, and you don't get the cool sound effects like the console, so they're less rewarding right there. So oh, um, exactly. But, yeah, like, I don't care to go back and do any of that stuff. So, um, but, yeah, that is a cool game. Sweet. And I beat it. I played some more Mario. Man, that game's fucking awesome. <sighs> I'm really liking Mario still. You haven't beaten it, have you? No, no, I haven't. I And beating it, you don't beat it. Beating it just, oh, <laughs> beating it just opens up the real game. I know. I've, I've heard. <laughs> I had my first... Like, I play, let's see, I have my first bout with Bowser in it. Oh, okay. So that's, yeah. like, I was crossing the ocean over, and then I... Man, when that happened, I was like, what? No. This isn't the end. Uh, uh, no way. Yeah, no, I... Because that happens quite early. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, So I just finished that, and that's, I'm at, um, I landed wherever you land after that. Is where yeah, I'm at right now. I think that's like the halfway point of this of the campaign per se. Oh, okay. Man, I figured it was maybe really, a quarter to really, halfway. So really cool shit that happens after you beat that game. Yeah, I've, I 
it well i mean not only that but there's like warp points in the game and oh yeah it's just I haven't, gone so back. Much. I haven't even gone back there's like new areas that open up after you beat the game yep and in particular this one new area is it's pretty mind-blowing being an old school nintendo fan that's awesome pretty awesome it is such a good game. Like it's crazy. Nintendo is going up against itself for a game of the year. <laughs> I know and between Zelda and Mario, it's like what? I know. There's a little part of me that's kind of like, man, they they could have spread these out a little bit better. But I mean, they they are still quite a ways apart. So yeah, they're just killing it. Yeah, and then like they're gonna have a Pokemon next year. Who knows when their Smash like Super Redux Deluxe Edition comes out? Like that's got to be coming. There's going to be a whole new set of freaking Amiibo. Oh, man. Speaking of Amiibos, oh, we've gotten a bunch of new Amiibos lately. God. I haven't talked about them in a while. But the Breath of the Wild ones just came out. They're pretty nice. Oh, yeah. I heard about those. And more Fire Emblem ones. <laughs> and then the Mario ones. I got to go scan all my Amiibo because actually um, there is one thing, I guess, that Amiibo do ruin in Mario Odyssey. Oh, um, one of the rewards after you beat the game is as you keep collecting power moons, and this isn't really a spoiler, right? Um, after you get a certain threshold of power moons, it unlocks different costumes. Yep. For Mario. And I think if you have the amiibo, you could just basically unlock them. Oh, really? Like you still have to go collect moons and stuff to complete the game, like hundred percent it. But to get like, if you have the Dr. Mario amiibo, you unlock a Dr. Mario costume, apparently. Oh, that's interesting. And stuff like that. Because, like... And there's, like, there's a lot of freaking costumes that you can unlock with amiibo, apparently. Well, I don't know about a lot, but I want to say at least 10. Wow. Because I was under the impression that all the amiibos did in the game, at least currently, at least for me, was help you find hidden moons. Yes. Any amiibo that doesn't give you a costume or a power-up, per se... Um, like if you have the peach amiibo, she gives you like, uh, one of the crown hearts that gives, extends your life by three, you know? So it gives you six, six hit points basically. Right. And that's the smash brothers peach. I don't know if the super Mario peach does that as well. Cause there's multiple versions of peach. I think there's three versions of peach in amiibo form. Hmm. There's like the Mario brothers one. Or the Mario series one. There's the Smash one. And then there's the new wedding one. But the new wedding one unlocks Peach's wedding dress. So Mario can actually run around in a dress and a tiara. Which is kind of funny. <laughs> That's pretty but funny. But the Smash one gives you life. And then, yeah, any other amiibo that doesn't actually unlock a costume. Uh, yeah, they basically go out in the world. And after about five minutes, they mark a, a power moon on your map. Which is the same as if you were to, if you ever visit any world, even uh, before you beat the story mode, after you beat a world, there's a toad that will be hanging out at the start of any world. And you can actually pay him 50 credits and he will mark a star on your map. Right. Though he, though he does it immediately compared to the amiibos. Yeah, like wait they five minutes and, or they whatever. Go and, they go out and find the power moon for you. So there's like an arbitrary, like time gate on that yeah right? it's so like a just come back in five minutes and kind of like to me. so you can't spam and essentially scam i don't know jesus christ i don't know how many evo i have but i want to say it's a lot i want to say around 70 or something if not more because i think there was like 50 something smashing evos wow and then there was variants so like there's two of some like there's the two versions of Cloud and the two versions of Bayonetta and the two versions of um, Corrin from Fire Emblem. Yeah, uh, I think I might have upwards of 100 Amiibo. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Start doing the math on that. Oh, God. That's a lot of money. <laughs> but they're so cool. Oh. I got to scan them all in. It's a lot, of, it's so a lot of money spent there, man. It is a lot of money. At least it wasn't all at once. Fair That's enough. Why I gotta sell drugs. That's why I gotta sell drugs on the side to afford my amiibo habit. It's like my Skylanders that my wife has here. We have hundreds of them. At least that's been like on a hiatus this year. Yeah, I don't know if we're ever gonna get it back. Is the real question. You get to recover. I'm I'm wondering if if they're gonna make another one. 
I'm sure there'll be another one. I I don't know, man. They like Did the last one do bad. Well, to be honest, I I don't think a lot of those toys to life things are doing essentially no, good they're, at all. They're all essentially they're all essentially dead, except for Amiibo, which don't really even have a game. They're just they're DLC that comes with a little toy. Yeah, except for the Amiibos are. And we've been over this. I don't like the Amiibos for what they do in game. I like the Amiibos because they're, in my opinion, awesome Nintendo uh, nostalgia collectibles, right? Right. Like, they're just amazing collectibles for all the amazing Nintendo characters because I don't know how the frick they do it, but they just have so many amazing characters. Like, And I like to collect them. So, <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Yeah, I don't know about Skylanders. I have a feeling it'll be back. Take a year off, let people relax with who may have had fatigue. Yeah, I don't know. Get I mean, we'll, gen- we'll get see. Get a new generation of kids come in. I feel like if we don't, if we don't get a we'll new game this year, I feel like it'll probably yeah. be if, dead. If there's no announcement by E3 before or by E3, then you might be right on that one. I just watching the Lego infinity. guys go we're done and watching and infinity the Disney infinity guys say the Disney infinity guys deserve to be done that game well, is such see, that's shit. a funny thing Kate. like speaking about both of these um the Lego one their fault was well Lego didn't allow them to make any money because the Lego toys are just freaking expensive to make yeah because like Lego has such a high standard of quality in the production of bricks and pieces and one-off molds and stuff made that product very expensive. So there was just no, the profit margin wasn't good enough. Even if it sold well, it was just like the return on investment wasn't worth the amount of money spent. And then Disney's infinity's freaking thing was why the fuck did you make 2 million Hulk figures? Like what the hell were you thinking? (sighs) Yeah. Like they just, that was total absolute mismanagement because whoever was in charge had their head up their ass and they should have been doing, you know, like uh, also why the hell like, yeah, I mean, we've talked about this before on this show. They lost money because they had too many toys and they just couldn't sell them. They always do. Uh, um, That's, that's, I mean, a huge problem that what happens, but what I mean is the, the game itself though. Yeah, what the, the hell were the you thinking? The game was thinking? okay like, at best. But the, the, yeah, you, you couldn't... Well, I know that it's saying... I don't know. I know that they didn't want to just copy what Skylanders was had done, but like, but, but why didn't you just, just copy copied. what Skylanders was done? Like, yeah, it's fucking stupid. It it blew my but, mind. Mommy, why why can't I use my, uh, my Elsa figure in this game? Oh, because you're in Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, well... Well... Yeah, it was Sweet. Why can't stupid. I use my Jack Sparrow? Because you're in Monsters, Inc. Like, like really? That's kind of the that whole point that, of all of it, and they yeah, sort like of... Yeah, like with Skylanders, you could take... You couldn't take your new guys back to the first game, but you could always take any of your old guys forward. Yep. Which, like... And like, and that sure, they wouldn't get pretty freaking obvious. quite as as powerful as the new characters. Or some and, of the benefit, but you could still use them. Yeah, exactly. Whereas, like, you did Des- Disney, Destiny, Disney Infinity had this whole like, can't use this guy in this thing, and you can't use this guy, here, but you can use him here, and you can use him there, and oh, these guys can only be used here and can't be used in any of the game content. It's like. It was like you needed oh. a spreadsheet to figure out what you could do. Like that was another huge oversight. But I actually think miss- that is the biggest reason that Disney Infinity went out, like went under, is because that, they did that- such a shitty job of making a good game that people wanted to buy the figures for. That probably didn't help a, a lot because like then, everybody I think got it- super excited about the first game. Yeah. Then once they realized, wait a minute. I you can't do this. Kind of wrecked all the that. goodwill that you may have or were gonna have with the second. And then they game. didn't. Yeah, and then they didn't fix it with the second version or the third version. No, and I think by then so people like, were just like, "This is yeah, dumb. Why am I gonna do this?" Done. And then they totally mismanaged and overproduced like the product. Yeah, like that's the one thing I would say I hate about Amiibo, which I think for the most part is better now. Like you couldn't walk into a store today. 
and buy every Amiibo. Not even right? Cause, close. Because when did Amiibo first come out? Like three years ago? Four years ago? It's been a while now. They, they were out before we started the podcast. Um, that's for sure. Or they've been around for a while. Because like, how old is Smash Brothers on Wii U? That's a few years ago. That's when the that's when Amiibos came out. It's at least three years, maybe even four years ago. Yeah. So the problem with them is like, well, they only made so few, and then you couldn't find any, and you had to resort on, uh, you know, secondhand markets. Um, but then, of course, they reproduce stuff, and a lot of the rare guys came back in waves. And right now, like, you can walk into a store, you can't buy every one, but there's going to be some figures that, you know, scalpers were making a, a a killing off of. They're just sitting on shelves in droves now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Still, you're going to have, there's still a lot of figures that are hard to find and you're going to have to pay a pretty penny for because they're just so old now. But, yep. um, you know, they did come back. So if you were an active collector, you didn't have to resort to paying scalpers. You could have gotten them all if you were active, which was annoying. But then Nintendo didn't run the risk of, having 2 million links that nobody wanted. But yeah. that also being said, Nintendo could sell 2 million links. <laughs> per, yeah, they. Pro- I mean, to be fair, they probably did. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they did. Oh, my God. I'm absolutely sure they did. But yeah, anyway, weird tangent to go down. But yeah, well, <laughs> toys of life. Hey. Yeah, we'll see. Like I that said, I don't weird. even know if, if we'll get another Skylanders game or not, which That's my so wife would be pretty upset if she doesn't get another one but i think we will yeah yeah here's hoping so um yeah with that let's get in some news my friend yes ea is buying titanfall developer respawn entertainment this is quite this is amusing after the fact that they just shut down (laughs) visceral (laughs) visceral like what a week ago two weeks ago um yeah i i I don't know this uh, i'm this is bittersweet news so they teased that they were working on a star wars game last year or the year before at an e3 i can't remember well they fully announced that they were working on a star wars game yeah, but it, they're working it wasn't on this two. Theory. Actually, they're working on an Oculus Star Wars or uh, yeah, a Star VR Wars game, game for Oculus, and they're working on a Star Wars game for EA. Yes, yeah, it wasn't this E three? I think it was the one before. Yep. Um, cause did did they do their own event or was it when they just unveiled Titanfall two? I can't remember now. Uh, it was at E three. It was during the it was during the yeah. EA press conference. Either way, it wasn't like. This isn't like secret. We knew there was this third ominous uh, Star Wars game from uh, Respawn, and we were all like, "Oh, piqued our interest." But that was it. It was just like they're making a game, and then and we still Visceral haven't making, seen or heard anything about it. And actually. Visceral's making another one. So rumor is this game is much better <laughs> than the Visceral game, which is we're finding out. Apparently, the Visceral Star Wars game was not doing so well. They were kind of stuck in development hell, and that's part of the reason the studio got shut down, which is really sad. Um, yeah, but I mean, we talked about this a while ago with the Kotaku story that came out where they really got into the nitty-gritty of what happened to mm-hmm. that studio. Uh, so, super interesting stuff. I would highly recommend, if you're interested in that, go read it. It's a bit long, but it's worth the read. And it gets so into apparent. all kinds of nitty gritty and why that studio was in hurting. And it had so much to do with, like you said, development hell, location, just the cost of having a studio in San Francisco. Like, there's a lot of reasons. Yeah. Um, um so this obviously, um, is good news and bad news. People are kind of weary. Oh, it's EA. They're going to ruin Respawn and shut them down eventually. But Well, to be uh, fair, <laughs> EA has a terrible track record with studios that they purchase. Then they allow yes. those studios to make some games. And then eventually they just... It's like they suck the soul out of the studio 
And then when there's no more soul left, the studio isn't doing great and they just shut it down. I mean, they bought Westworld back in the day, and you know, the Command and Conquer guys. They bought Bioware, which, I mean, one could argue at this point is in a weird spot, I think, is best you could kind of put it. I mean, obviously, the new Mass Effect did terrible. They've now essentially put Mass Effect on the back burner. Uh, We may or may not get another Mass Effect game. Um I think Anthem's going to be a Anthem looks for I- that interesting, studio. so we'll see how that goes. Uh, obviously, Visceral awesome. they they purchased Visceral and and now they've shut them down. Um, so I, I mean, uh, the SimCity developer they they've now <laughs> shut those guys down. Maxis, uh, yeah, Maxis. So uh, they've definitely <laughs> got a track record of doing this, which is I think why people are so concerned. Uh, the studios at the same time have all released some stinkers too. Let's not totally be unfair to EA, even though EA is total evil bunch of assholes. But <laughs> I, um, I guess my, yeah, my question with the, that though that I have <laughs> to ask is how much of those studios making maybe some subpar games? And I'm not blaming their fault or EA's. Well, how much of that sort of you know? can you sort of put on EA and I don't know cause I'm not in those positions to know. Um, but it's just, it's interesting that they, they've purchased these studios and then, you know, maybe a, a, a studio with a fairly decent track record sort of ends up having a bad run after they get purchased. Now, is that because EA is suddenly all up in their shit all the time? I, I don't know. And I, and I hope that's not the case. And I don't think it is because I mean, reading that visceral studio, like there was a, or that visceral story, there was a lot more going on there than just EA screwed our studio and, and we're done. Like there was a lot of, of, of reasons why that was probably going to go that way, regardless of EA's involvement. Um, but it just, it just makes me wonder, is it because, EA comes in and they end up putting themselves into the studio or what happens there? You know, like, is it because they don't allow the studio to have that freedom that they used to have to make these decisions? Is it, I mean, look at, I mean, we'll get, we'll get into this in a bit. Like they are just the publisher for these games, right? Sure. But they're also all the money. Right, like that's that's the yeah, thing too. Like they're the ones true. that say, like, okay, look, like, but they don't. This isn't for, what we for, want. We want this game to be to have loot boxes. Yeah, but they don't walk in and do any kind of programming or have that ability to just change a project, right? So if something sucks, it sucks because the dev has been sucking. Yeah, right. Or it's like, like the, I mean, the demands after the fact from the publisher to implement stuff or whatnot don't change the core concept or engine or performance or story of a game yeah like a stinker is still a stinker regardless of what they may have asked to be bolted on does it here's Um, my next question does this mean that the respawn guys are now gonna have to use the frostbite engine for everything they do i doubt it i really hope that's not the case because um that seems kind of going challenge in and of itself we're definitely going off the rails on this one but (laughs) it the one thing I do like about this is that they were so they were not very sure about the future of Titanfall, and it definitely sounds like after this Star Wars thing that we're going to get another Titanfall. Yeah, they've they've flat out said that this they they're which, they're making another Titanfall, which is great. And then of course EA buying them gives me a lot of confidence in the Star Wars game they're making. Yeah, is probably going to be pretty awesome. Like we respawn is an awesome studio. Titanfall one is great. Titanfall 2 is awesome. Um, You know, it got... The only reason more people aren't talking about Titanfall is because for some stupid reason, um, they sandwiched it between Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty last year, which was just the bizarrest of things. And I don't know, that was was probably some kind of EA, if we do this, we're going to make more money with Battlefield. I don't know what it was. Like, it was a weird decision. I, I, either way, like I, that's the bone. <laughs> I think it was them trying to do the one-two 
to try and pull as much sales screw, let's, as they could away from Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Yeah. And it may or may not. It, it must have worked because, look, Respawn is not closed down, regardless of how well Titanfall 2 did or didn't do. And they're actually being bought by EA. So whatever their plan was must have worked because now they're being bought. And Vince Pella is now getting another giant payday. <laughs> Fucking bastard. Yeah. Like, you know, whether people realize or not, like, Respawn is Infinity Ward. Infinity Ward created Call of Duty. Yep. Call of Duty is one of the largest franchises in video games. Yep. That's that's Respawn's heritage. The the people who created those gigantic, like, fran- Call of Duty franchise that, that built the foundation is essentially Respawn. So there's a lot of pedigree in this studio. So that's really cool. Yeah, no. And it's... I'm excited for a Titanfall 3 cuz we both love the Titanfall universe. Hey man, that, that's that second the game was ab- like the story mode in that second game is incredible. Yeah, it, it was fantastic. Still one of my favorite first person shooters from last year. <laughs> um so speaking of EA, <laughs> oh. Um so what you say? E- <laughs> So battle, we talked about Battlefront last week because the open, the EA Origin or EA Access or whatever the hell they call it, um, play the game early if you have uh, what the hell they call it. It's the EA Access or whatever. It's on the consoles. I can't remember the name. It's called of it EA now. Access like, on consoles and Origin Access yeah, origin. on PC. So if you have their monthly subscription with their like you know their game vault of older games that you can play whenever and they're always adding games to it you get uh, previews of you know soon to be early access to games like for example you can play up to 10 hours of the campaign or multiplayer which in terms of the campaign it's you can play the first three st- story missions um you know which we talked about last week which is beautiful mm-hmm. seems decent i don't know I haven't played the whole campaign. It might take a left and not, you know, it's not amazing, but it's a totally competent Star Wars campaign that looks freaking awesome. Right. Um, I haven't delved into any of that, the multiplayer stuff because I don't care for Battlefront or Battlefield. I just, I don't care for that multiplayer. I don't, whatever. Anyway, with this open access, you essentially have the full game. So number one, people started doing some math and people started noticing a few things. Um, namely more about this goddamn loot box thing. Uh, even though EA has changed and said they were taking shit out of loot boxes and yada, 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 yada. End of the day, a couple of people did some math and they're like, well, if you want to unlock the hero characters in Battlefield to unlock one character for an average player performing averagely well in multiplayer, it's going to take you 40 hours. Wow. That's in-game crazy. Multiplayer game time, which is for one character. And we're talking about multiple heroes like Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, Kylo Ren. I don't know how many freaking heroes there are in this game or whatnot. Um, Jeez. And people are like, what the fuck? And of course, if you use real world money and buy loot boxes, you get more I don't know, currency or crafting materials and and stuff that will essentially greatly reduce the time to unlock these characters, let alone the whole argument of that it, it pretty much looks like if you do put money into the game, you do get boosts ahead of players that would be not getting them that were playing the game normal, so you would be performing better. So the whole pay to win thing is like in full force. Everyone is like in full force. It's not like super gross, but anytime a boost that you can buy is pay to win, regardless of how minuscule it is. So there's that aspect. There's the whole terrible time gating, like time investment to unlock stuff, which, you know, for most people is gonna make them turn to spending money. Just, it's really, really, really freaking gross. And people are like, hey, this is bullshit. Like, fuck you guys. Like, this is terrible. So the only story, there's nobody talking about how good this game is. Or isn't. The only dialogue <laughs> about this game right now is that uh, Dice or Motif and EA are just fucking you to spend money on loot boxes and don't respect your time or investment as a player and it's all about screwing you out of money that's the only dialogue about this game it's been loot boxes loot boxes loot boxes and they clearly haven't fi- fixed it so they went on to reddit and posted a defense 
<laughs> article, which is the most downvoted Reddit comment ever. Wow. Like, ever. Uh, when this article was written, uh, it was minus 340,000. I think it's over minus, like, half a million votes now. Wow. Like, and in, like, the most downvoted, like, that's crazy. Um, that's a lot so of people downvotes. weren't very happy with their, their defense. Now, they have gone back and changed the cost to unlock heroes by 75%. Yeah, they reduced it. Thanks. Huge. Thanks, EA. You guys are so awesome. Uh, but then, of course, they reduce the, the amount of credits that it takes to unlock a character. Then, of course, they reduce the amount you get for beating the campaign. Right. Cause initially <laughs> you would get, what was it, like 20,000 credits? I don't know how many you would get. And now you get 5,000? Yeah, but so, like, they didn't just reduce, so, it's like, god damn, like, man, what a clusterfuck. This is not, this game, regardless of being good or bad, and I've already, some reviews have started hitting, and people, the campaign's getting a meh too good. Okay. It's not getting a this is awesome. There's some highs and lows, and then some points that people are just like, eh, it's kind of forgettable. So... With all this backlash, like I'm like hovering over the cancel button on this, even though I got a deal. Like I'm getting this game for fifty bucks, right? So in Canada, that's a pretty significant discount. Like, um, I don't know why, but for some reason, I was able to get it on Amazon for forty nine compared to seventy nine. So like, that's pretty good in Canada. Thirty dollars off a brand new game, but I'm st- like, all this negative discussion and this just disrespect for the players, uh, the consumers, because, like, this isn't a free-to-play fucking game. It's an $80 game in Canada plus tax and a $60 game in the U.S. plus tax. And that's, and that's for, for the, the, the cheap version. That's, yeah, that's the basic fucking shit version. That's not the you-get-all-the-cool-stuff version. Except that, they from still what have, I understand, still... that you don't get much cool stuff in the other versions. <laughs> and they still have, like, $100 and, I think, $120 versions of this game. It's like, what the f- I don't know. I'm seriously, even though I'm getting a deal in this game, I've been ho- hovering over the cancel button and I'm almost contemplating canceling it. I didn't pre-order it and I'm glad I didn't. I, and hearing that like Kotaku's review said the campaign is four hours long. Whoa. And that's the, that's the only thing I'm there for. Uh, I Ooh. contacted EA to try and get a copy. Um, they got back to me and said, oh, and we get closer to release, which chances are means I'm probably not going to get a copy from them. That's I was never banking on it, so that's why I pre-ordered it. Right. But, yeah. But th- that sucks. Sucks for everyone who's poured their life and soul into this to make a good game. And then this is kind of leading to what you were saying. Like, did EA make them do this? Was it the devs who did this? Like, I've heard varying uh, arguments uh saying that, you know, everyone's painting EA as the bad guy, but a lot of this stuff comes from the devs that are, like, just straight up wanting, um, you know, that, that the cash fall. They that want the loot box with, money. Yeah, they want that loot box money, you know. We heard about that Activision, Overwatch cash, when, man. When, when Activision's bottom line is boosted by $3 billion by strictly in-game purchases, $3 billion... That's all of those people, Overwatch you know, loot boxes, that, man. That kind of makes people go a little crazy and kind of want to get in on that gold rush. Yeah. Um, but again, I, I think that if if you're looking at it like that, I feel like you're missing the whole point, though. In, yeah, they are missing the fucking point. Um, which is unfortunate. And I, and I really feel bad for the devs in this particular case for, because nobody's talking for, about whether or not your game is actually worth playing. You know, All they're yeah, talking like, about is whether or not you want to buy the game because it has or doesn't have loot boxes that are wasting your time and effort and money and everything, right? The only discussion that's going on in this game is that EA is fucking you and screwing you and trying to take your money. There's no discussion about the merits of the game at all, which really sucks. 
That's not how you want to launch a game that you just spent the last three or four years of your life working on. Exactly. And I, and I, and it sucks. And I mean, and I've heard, <laughs> and I also want to be clear, like, I, I think that the loot box thing, it sucks and it sounds like it's a broken sort of if system. If this was not a Star Wars game, this game would bomb so hard because the only thing that's going to save this game is that the mass market has no idea about any of this stuff. And they don't care. And they don't care, and they're probably going to find it out when they buy it. But they've already bought the game, so EA got their 60 bucks. And, and, they and also, may buy are they going to care? That's the real question, is is the general populace going to care? They might care, care when, they don't, when they realize, oh, I can't play as Darth Vader. I've got to spend more money. They're going to get upset, but they're not the ones that are on the internet chiming up about it. They might not buy the next version. But had this been any other type of game, this game would, this game will sell a lot still because of Star Wars. But had it been anything else, this is like, would be a guaranteed death sentence. All this negative press. I still also want to point out, though, that the way that some people have been treating the studio, just because you don't think that this is right or is good, still doesn't give you the right to send death threats and act like a complete moron towards no, the like developers. The, it's like the idiots who harass the developers of Mass Effect. That's just fucking sad. If you're doing that, you, there's something wrong with you. So I, I just want to point out that, like, you know, people work hard to build these things. That's the sad part. And you threatening to kill them and their family over a video game <laughs> is unacceptable, in my opinion. Yeah, so That's ridiculous. I can't believe people do that that's you've got problems yeah. um anyway bottom line we've talked about it before and i'm gonna end it here the only thing that should ever be in loot boxes are cosmetic items period end of story i'm fine with that yeah anything else is bs and shouldn't exist you can have you can add loot boxes to every fucking game from here on out make the maps the expansion's free, the maps for free, and so forth, and then you make your loot box money, but strictly keep it to cosmetics, and then you're fine. Like, but when you start putting power ups and additional currency that unlocks more powerful characters and a gated, uh, you know, gated content that you just made the treadmill or the 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 grind so tedious that you have to resort to spending money, it's like get fucked. Yeah, it sucks. Uh, okay, moving on. Yes. Out of left field, Noctis is coming to Tekken 7. The main character from uh, Final Fantasy 15. Uh, Final Fantasy 15 is coming to Tekken 7. Wow. Did not see this coming. I don't know if anybody did. This is no, so bizarre. Like, what the? So it looks like we got a Final Fantasy stage and like watching the trailer. And then they have Noctis... Beating up Yoshimitsu and all these freaking dudes. Uh, people are pretty happy with Tekken 7. I might have to pick it up if I see it on sale on Black Friday. I really like the old Tekkens. I know. I, I did as well. It's pretty interesting. So speaking of other weird mashups uh, in fighting games, because that's the trend this week, the Ninja Turtles are coming to Injustice 2. <laughs> that was crazy to me. Yeah, as well as surprise, Injustice 2 is on PC now. Wow. Like that just like happened. <laughs> Literally surprise. they sent out a they sent a press release on Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, um yeah, Injustice 2 is on PC now. Oh, and yeah, the turtles are coming too. Wow. Cool, eh? <laughs> I the, the, the Ninja the Turtle ch- thing threw me a loop. I was like, "What?" And it, yeah, the, it they look cool. Like I don't know how they'll play in the Injustice game, but cool. Yeah, they're the good-looking version of Turtles. Yeah, they don't look um, all weird I like the movie. I think the Turtles play it like as one character and with like a move combination. You could switch between them. Interesting. Is the is the theory that people have. I don't hmm. think it's four separate So you don't get to choose characters. which one? No, you can choose which one, but like you only ever have one turtle on the screen. I'm sure some of their super moves are combo moves where they all probably jump in and cause chaos but wow um they don't show them fighting it's just like a teaser and announcement 
Hmm. Does it even have it? Does it even have a date here? I don't think it even has a date. It just says it's their fighter pack three, which yeah, I guess is part of their season pass. That's cool. Um, Nintendo is making an animated Mario movie. Yeah, with the studio behind Minions, which I like. I, I like the Minions. I like movies. Despicable Me. I don't care for the Minions, but I'm also not a child. I have watched Minion movies because I have children in my life. Are you uh, calling me a child because I watched them and then I enjoyed them? No, no, no. But oh. I mean, like, uh, my, like, I haven't gone to theaters to see Minions, but I've seen a Minions movie, obviously, because of, you know, my nieces and nephews and stuff. Right. Um, I don't know. People are, like, poo-pooing it because people just hate Minions because, you know, it's cool to hate on Minions. I, honestly, I think... I'm confused as to why minions are so popular because I think they're an ugly <laughs> character design or like model, but hey, that's not up to me. Kids like little creatures that make weird noises and say banana a lot. Yep. So what, you know, it's making them money. I think they're terrible. Like, <laughs> I don't know. They're kind of like rabbits. Rabbits and minions are the same to me. Yeah. Uh. I like minions more than rabbits, but I'm not. I do like minions more than rabbits, but they're successful for some reason, and I'm not overly hey, fond of either of them, to be totally you know, honest with you. But and the only reason I don't like them is because I just don't like their design aesthetic. Yeah, that's I fair. just don't like the way they look. I think they look dumb, but that's just me. Other people don't think so. Um. So yeah. Anyway, this comes probably part and parcel with the whole Universal Nintendo Land deal, like so, a, a, an offshoot of all of that stuff. So has this actually gone through? Because I was under the understanding that there was rumors that this was being worked on, but nobody had actually come out and made a full-on announcement for this. They're in talks. Okay. So. Nothing to announce. So that's the thing. I don't know. Have they made a Mario rendered like? CG movie, it's gonna look. It's gonna be our Mario. They're just having a talented animation team that has proven, like, popular. You know, movies. So you know, people hear Minions. It's not gonna be a Minions Mario movie. It's gonna be Nintendo's image of Mario and that world. So I'm, I'm excited for that. It'd be better than the fucking fat wrestler with elastic bands in his nose and. Doing weird dances like their crazy TV show or that terrible Super Mario movie that they made in the in the nineties, late nineties, yeah. Oh, I think it was aye, 90s, aye, aye. Yeah, early nineties, 90, 93. Yeah, so that's interesting. I'm trying to think I, if I've ever actually watched that whole movie. I, I never have. It I've seen bits terrible. and pieces of it. I feel like I feel like a little bit obligated to watch it in a weird <laughs> way. Yeah, the. Game Awards uh, have been announced. Okay. So you can go online and vote. like uh, For which games you the, think should win? Yeah. You can check out the podcast notes. We'll have a link to this. Um, obviously, you can go to the Game Awards site. I think you can vote on Google and YouTube and all over the fucking place. Uh, but I guess, one, I guess the key announcement is their Game of the Year category. Uh, Breath of the Wild. Super Mario Odyssey, PUBG, Player Unknowns, Battlegrounds, interesting. Persona Five, and Horizon Zero Dawn. No Zelda. Uh, Zelda is the first one. I said. Sorry. Zelda, Mario, PUBG, Persona Five, and Horizon. That's not a surprising lineup. So no uh, Destiny. Uh, well, though. Persona Five is surprising. <laughs> That's I think Persona Five is good. I haven't been able to go back to it. I'm like at the end of that game. <laughs> um, it's probably been so long you forget where you're at. and It's, yeah. There's a lot of other categories as well. I haven't voted. I'm surprised um, Destiny 2 isn't one of the game of the years. but I'm sure it's in one of the other categories. Oh, I'm sure it is too. I'm just meeting like for the, for the full game of the year. Like there's tons of categories like narrative, uh, Best art direction, like see Destiny 2's in best art direction. Yeah. Best score. Best audio designs, Destiny 2. Best performance. Okay, those are like the voice actors. Hmm. There's a lot of categories. 
Uh, yeah, Destiny 2 best is in the best on ongoing game category. I think Mario and Zelda are in the most categories. Um, hmm. Okay. Yeah. Period. And I think Horizon's in there too. Horizon is a pretty freaking fantastic game. I don't know. I don't know where I'm at with my year, game of the year. Yeah, I, I'm not I, sure either. I, I've been. I there's think, been a lot of talk about it recently, and I've been I, thinking I really liked, about it a lot more. I really liked Zelda. I think Mario's beating Zelda for me, and that's just because I have more of a love for Mario. Um, but man, Horizon was really freaking good. I and I need to play more Horizon. I ah, oh, and I I I didn't really get in. Well, but I didn't I get beat, into. I didn't even play PUBG. So for me, I've it's beat, not really. I've beat I beat four out of the five games in this category. Yeah, I beat Persona Five. Oh man! And by beating PUBG, I mean I got a solo win, chicken dinner, twice. There you go. You won. So I beat that game. Yeah. There's nothing else. That's it. I don't know. I ever had to play it again. <laughs> Yeah, check those out. I, when I have a chance, I'm going to vote. Yeah, I'll definitely throw my vote in the ring there. Uh, so Destiny 2 uh, had a little live stream today. They're, they were showing off some of the Curse of Osiris content. Right. Uh, they're showing some of the new planet, uh, the open space, Mercury. I think they showed some of the first mission and talked about some of the content coming. Sweet. Uh, they haven't spilled the beans on everything. They're doing like three live streams before like this week, next week, and the following week. Right. Okay. Um, there isn't a new raid per se. Interesting. But there is a new raid. They call it, what do they call it? What's the language here? It's new raid content. Hmm. They, they... There's a name for it. Are they going to add a new here? strike, I wonder? There's a new strike. There's a new planet. There's new campaign stuff. Yeah, they call it a raid layer, which is it's a completely different section of the raid. Huh, uh, okay. It's a little shorter than the first raid, but it is still pretty high on challenge and puzzles and encounters and loot. Interesting. It requires six people, but it isn't a new raid per se because it takes place in a different section of the of the existing raid. Hmm. So it's like a new raid, but not a new raid because it's still like in the same place, but not the same areas. Like it's a complete different section of the ship. Okay. Because the, Levi- the Leviathan is like a giant uh, planet eating ship that the Cabal have made. Yeah. Um, and anyway, this new uh, raid layer, as they call it, is like a different section of the ship. So... Completely new content, new end boss, even, um, which is kind of neat. Hmm, okay. And yeah, you know, similar size stuff, uh, I guess, to another expansion, like new public space, new world to go to, new campaign missions. So it sounds like a, a bit of a bigger expansion. This isn't. And, uh, apparently, there's like crafting as well, which they haven't really unveiled but there's like a crafting table hmm. uh, so there's going to be like a whole layer of crafting weapons and uh, new vex weapons which look really cool i hope they don't go and add like too many weird currency slash layers of no crap yeah to- i don't i don't i don't think that's it i think this whole crafting thing is uh i think they're like the exotic quests hmm. okay to get to get a bunch of weapon new weapons looks neat We'll f- learn more next week. Yeah, uh, I'm super excited about it. I mean, it's... Also, speaking of Destiny 2... it's coming in like a month. Yeah, the start of December. Yeah. Like, with the PC version coming... Like, for PS4 players, it probably feels like forever. For PC players who aren't crazy OD... Like, we're in, what, week two? Maybe week three of it being on PC now? Wow. Um. So, like... For PC people, like, um, besides the most hardcore, a lot of people probably haven't even done the raid or are just getting into the end game content like you are, right? Mm-hmm. So, 
yeah, it seems like oh god, this is more stuff. It's already here. Yeah, which is great. I'm not, I'm not even I'm not even done the original stuff. No, I mean I haven't done a <laughs> Nightfall yet. I haven't done. I don't know if I'll. Ha- we'll see. I don't know if I'll get on the raid or not, but uh, I'll definitely probably try a Nightfall. And I've done some strikes. Nothing too crazy on the strikes. Just the main, just a regular one so far. But uh, and hitting. On the console side, uh, hitting with the expansion, the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X are getting enhancements, namely HDR support and 4K resolution, which apparently, I guess, the original on the PS4 Pro doesn't have 4K support. Um, so it's the PS4 Pro is getting adaptive 4K, which is obviously like that adaptive uh, resolution, resolution scaling up and down goes up and down the situation yeah. yeah which still looks better than say like just 1080 so th- there's a note there's going to be a visual upgrade there which is nice and and the xbox x version will actually just be going straight 4k right um, which, which makes sense pretty nice still 30 fps though uh, yeah and no mouse course, and keyboard yeah. The, the consoles are staying 30 frames per second. Even if I imagine the X could do 60, they're not. They're keeping parity across the consoles uh, in terms of that. What? So that's kind of nice. There's going to be a visual upgrade. So maybe it won't look so bad when I go and launch it after the expansion. Uh, though I won't be buying the expansion on PS4. I'm, I've am i pretty much abandoned the PS4. I'm strictly PC. It's so much better. Oh, it's so fucking good. <laughs> that's, that's the one d- regret I have about my Friday off, uh, as I probably played way more Destiny than I wanted to. Um, because <laughs> it's so good. You don't want to so stop good. playing. And yeah, I, yeah, we, like I said, we rolled our third characters and did a bunch of shit. So, um, so like I said, I uh, get it. It's, it's, I, at one point i was like oh man i should stop playing this and go play more assassin's creed but it was like well maybe in another like let me just run this other mission over here and the next thing i knew two hours had passed i was like yeah Shit. well that's it and i'm like oh let's just run a couple missions oh we've spent half the day playing yep uh this next story might be pretty sad for you um yeah marvel heroes is getting shut down out of like left field <sighs> Uh, it's just like, yeah, the free to play Marvel games is there. Yeah, it's done. Yeah. It's a bummer. I mean, to be fair, I haven't played it in a bit, but it sucks. Um, like, and I don't know what that's going to look like necessarily. Like, it's, it's interesting because they just added, what was it? Marvel Heroes Omega on PS4 and Xbox One earlier. Yeah. So, it's very interesting is if this was one of those situations where is it Marvel ended its uh, relationship with gazillion. There's been no comment from Disney uh, or Marvel uh, there. Everyone's waiting. They've just been basically confirmed by gazillion right. that it's getting shut down. Um, yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's a bummer. I like it's, it was essentially a Diab- a free Diablo game with Marvel characters. Um, and like that game had a real rocky initial start. It seemed to find and, found its footing and was doing from what I understand, pretty decent. Well, and that's the thing, like that initial game was kind of rough, but then they re relaunched as Marvel heroes, 2015. And that game was so much better. And that's when I kind of jumped on board, played through the, played through the campaign. Um, I've played multiple characters up to level 60. Yeah, you played it. You played it. Bob. Yeah, I've got 80, 100 hours played, like, like quite a few in that game. Um, so yeah, I don't know. But apparently, like, I guess since mid October, they added Loki and then they kind of went quiet. So it's, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. I don't know how much longer the game's going to be up. Because that, that, that's the real question is, you know, like, say you just purchase Loki, because that was the thing that they did in that game, is they offered the game free to play, and then they gave you... There was a selection of starting characters, and then you could essentially unlock one of those characters 
fully once you hit a certain point if you chose and they allowed you to play through pretty much all of the characters to try them up to level was it like 10 i think just so that you could get a feel for for what they played like and things like that um but i mean if you just bought loki in october and now you found out that the game is going under like how long i'm wondering till they decide to shut the servers down is this like a we're gonna shut them down in a year from now is this a six months from now is that that's you know that's kind of what i'm wondering like is this gonna be a fairly quick thing or is this gonna be well you know we're shutting it down but we're still gonna keep the servers and everything going for the next while here you know yeah. so um, who knows yeah, yeah no it's it's a that bummer a though because that was potentially could have also invested a lot of money in. well yeah, it, for you to play a game you could have been paying, sunk a lot of money in buying characters and stuff. Hopefully it lasts for a while still without new content, but who knows? Yeah. It'll be interesting to hear why it's shutting down. Has it not been doing good or is it just a Disney's like, yeah, we're done with video games? <sighs> yeah, I, that's the weird thing. Um, we don't know. We just know they're shutting down. Yeah. And the weird, and the weird thing is, is that their, their email was so strange. In the email, uh, Disney sent an email to Polygon, and they say, We regret to inform our Marvel Heroes fans that we have ended our relationship with Gazillion Entertainment and that the Marvel Heroes games will be shut down. Yeah, that's pretty, like... It's not saying, like, oh, thank you for your support, and we're so sorry, but we've just decided that the game has run its course and blah, blah, blah. Like, this is just, like, nope. It it almost feels like a licensing thing. Like they couldn't, they refused to license the characters anymore. And yeah, Gazillion has like no choice but to shut it down because they're all yeah, licensed characters. That's kind of almost what it sounds like. But yeah, again, I'm speculating. I don't actually yeah. know. But uh, the, the, this is a developing story. This is literally like breaking news has happened as we sat down. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's 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 a bummer. I I really. I really do like that game and it's funny because I seem to go back to it every so often. It's it's just such a great like I said, it's it's like a Diablo clone with Spider Man for crying out loud. Yeah. Um done really well. So it's a uh, huge bummer. It is a bummer. Yeah. Um that's it for news. I had some other things, but I removed them. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much to say. Amazon's making a Lord of the Rings TV series, and apparently the director for The Last Jedi is going to be helming a new Star Wars trilogy. Interesting. Not much to say besides more content from some pretty beloved franchises, which is, hey, that's rad. That's interesting seeing is that Last Jedi hasn't even come out yet, so we don't even know if that's a good thing or not. (laughs) I imagine it's a good thing because I don't think Disney would uh, greenlight a new trilogy by someone who just made a shitty movie. I'm not disagreeing. <laughs> so that's a good thing. But it's interesting. Where is that going to go? Yeah. Like a new unrelated trilogy, like after this trilogy or next to this trilogy or prequel to this trilogy? Or is it going to be a side story? A, or or yeah. erasing the abominations that are one, two, and three and telling us good versions of that, that story? No, I don't think they'll do that. <laughs> that would be awesome. I, th- I think at the end of the day, you have to just accept that one, two, and three are there. They're canon. <laughs> No. And they happened. And they, they are canon. And they should be retold with <laughs> respect. And I th- I th- I don't know. I like as as much as everybody hates on them, them. I they are what they are and I don't know. They, they I th- are what they're they are, also they are. I think a large part reason how I was able to get my wife to watch Star Wars to be honest with they you. They are what they are and you know that device from men in black <laughs> they should just use that on all of us and then destroy every sign and piece of evidence that one two and three existed and or were created and we'd all be better off for it <laughs> like i said I, I think there's some good stuff in there there is some good stuff, and in it's just unfortunate that there was also some really bad stuff in there uh-huh. yeah um Sometimes you got to take the bad with the good. Yeah. PSAs. I just wrote Black Friday. Black Friday is coming. There's probably going to be a bunch of deals. 
a lot of the deals have been outed on the internet. Um, our friend at Wario64 on Twitter has posted a lot of the flyers for, I think, most of the big stores, outlets in the U.S. Down in the U.S., uh, yeah. It hasn't been, like, nothing for Canada. So uh, I saw, the actually, the Walmart Black Friday, like, leaked for Canada, and there's nothing good in there. A lot of the U.S. video game deals are pretty freaking awesome. Like, a lot of the AAA newest releases are, like, 25 or 30 bucks. Wow. So, like, you miss some titles over the year, you've going to have a good opportunity to, to get some of those on a good deal. So, obviously, it's still over a week away, but the next episode won't be coming out until after everyone's been trampled in the, in the <laughs> store. So, yeah, just a reminder, keep an eye out for those deals. I'm going to be taking it. I'm hoping, I don't, in the U.S., they have... PlayStation blog posted that the Skyrim VR bundle is like three fifty American. Whoa! I know that's the brand new bundle. Uh, so it's having a Black Friday deal. I'm hoping that it's on deal up here as well. Otherwise, I might excuse me have to buy it down there and get it shipped here or ship it to a friend or something because that's a pretty smoking deal because it's like five eighty. Like three forty nine, even with the exchange, would be saving like a couple hundred bucks compared That's, to buying it yeah. at full price Canadian. So, considering I just sold my headset for like three hundred bucks, I'm kind of liking that price. So, no I don't kidding, know. jeez. Um, and that's like, you know, I don't need the new camera and the new Move controllers, but they are the updated Move controllers with the micro SD or, yeah, no. Micro SD. Not micro SD, micro USB, <laughs> mini USB, or whatever the freaking not USB C, the smaller, better standard. You mean USB C? Yeah, it's not. They're not USB C, but what's the one before that? Mini or micro? Micro. Okay, so they're, they're micro. So they're the same as the PS4 controllers and yes. everything else, as opposed to this the plug before that, which is a pain in the ass because. Literally, those are the only freaking things I have that use that plugs still. I know. I, anyway. I, those are, I think, the move controllers are the only. And things you get that Skyrim, Skyrim VR, which you know, some people. I've heard some people describe it as a dumpster on fire. I would like to experience that for myself and be the judge for myself. Fair um, enough. You know, I was really because I was looking at the prices and like, oh, I could just buy an Oculus, like just forego the PSVR, but. I really like the Star Wars game that I have, the one mission that I have, and I really like Super Hot VR, and you know, I still want to play Gran Turismo in VR, and I want to see Skyrim in VR. So, still cheaper per se. Yay, nay. Fair enough. And or I just I'm not a huge fan of Oculus, so. <laughs> I anyway. I think it's. I don't know. When it comes to the Oculus stuff, I'm a little bit gun shy right now just because. Oh, and their store and the new yeah, headsets what's coming next happen year. And yeah, it just seems. Wireless and this and that. And yeah. Anyway, yeah. And I know I like my PSVR. I just didn't like the fact that I had to swap cables. And that was a pain in the ass. Not And getting my HDR pass through and lighter, longer cables seems like nice upgrades. Yeah, and like I see, I, I miss I miss my PSVR. Like Resident Evil Seven was awesome in VR. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, Black Friday. Hopefully, they have a good deal here. I if not. I'm, I'm if not, I'm shipping it. I'm shipping it to one of you guys in the states, and then you're gonna send it to me. I have such mixed feelings about the Black Friday <laughs> stuff. I, I kind of liked that we weren't super crazy like that, but no. Anyways, but some of the deals on the games. I know. Red. I know. I was like looking in the the flyers and they're like Xbox One X, Black Friday. Like, there's no discount. Like, why even put that in here? Like, <laughs> like why? What the hell? Like, no, you should only be putting deals. We understand that system's just brand new and you're not giving deals, but why would you even put it in the Friday under the guise that like there's a sale going on? No, no, it's to to remind people that it's there and they can buy yeah. it. Uh, free for all. Uh, I saw Thor. I know. I want to see it real bad. I've heard such good things. That movie is pretty freaking rad. It yeah. has a fun story. It has a lot of cool characters. Some awesome action. 
And yeah, dude, it's it's <laughs> it's basically they've taken the Guardians freaking template and, and applied it to put, Thor and, and applied to Thor and Hulk. Yeah, Hulk is freaking fantastic in this movie. Yeah, I've the the whole the whole movie is awesome. I laughed out loud so many. I think I probably laughed out even more than the most recent Guardians. Actually, I probably say it's even better than Guardians too. Yeah, that's... I don't know about Gar- I don't know about Guardians One because Guardians One is a pretty fantastic movie, but right, yeah, it man, it looked cool from the trailers and stuff. Uh, my expectations were maybe pretty high for it, <laughs> uh, but yeah, what a fun, fun freaking movie! I was just happy the entire time I was watching it. It's a great flick. If you obviously, if you like the Marvel stuff, you'll probably like this. You're you're gonna like this. Yeah, like I even like it better than I'd say any of the Avenger movie. It ranks pretty high for me. Wow. Yeah. Uh, no. Maybe not as high as. Well, I don't know. Guardians one's pretty freaking high for me. Top five. I think Home Spider Man Home Camp Coming is up there. What about um, uh, Captain America Civil War? Captain America. I haven't watched Civil War again since I saw it in the theater. So I really got to watch that one again. I actually think um, Civil War was good. Civil really War was it. good, but this the I second think Winter Soldier, Winter was, Soldier really was awesome. Yeah. Um, I don't know. This might be one of my in my top five Marvel movies. Wow. It's really freaking good. And it's fun. And it's funny. The characters are freaking hilarious. Well, that's fair. That's cool, man. Like, there's so many cool things. And, of course, there's crazy action and, you know, action scenes. But they're they're good. They're freaking good. <laughs> and there's some cool surprises. There's a lot of shit. that the, You think the trailers show you a lot of this movie? They really they don't, don't show you a lot. No. Good. There's, there's, like, right from the gate, there's some freaking amazing, like, Marvel stuff and characters that... Yeah, I'll just leave it there. This is a fucking good movie. That's awesome. Go watch. Go watch Thor. Seriously. Yeah, I, like, it's on my like. I really want to see. Hit stop it. and go um, watch Thor. Because I mean, Justice League comes out. Is it this weekend? I think. Yeah, I got yeah. Nelson invited me to go watch Justice League, and I'm just like, oh. I've heard it's been getting decent ratings, and I'm just like, I don't care to go watch it in the theater. Oh, I really want to see it. I want to see it both looks, of them. I've heard decent. Things, but it's got decent ratings. I might go see. Uh, oh man, Blade Runner twenty forty nine with some of the guys from work next week. So, mm. Blade Runner was cool. There's some really cool stuff in Blade Runner, but it's a very different movie. Too. Yeah, no, completely different. So. Some um, after you watch Blade Runner, because uh, I didn't go into huge detail. I wish I could have a joy. <laughs> if you watch Blade Runner, you know what I'm talking about. Sounds good. Um, I think that's it, my friend. Yeah, episode 131. Else. That is the show. One you can uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Rick F No K R I C F. You can always come hang out with me on Twitter at Dane Cody at D A Y N E C O D Y. Make sure to like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter at Geekaholics. All at all of the above. Um, we're on the Instagram too, but I don't really do anything there because it's just way too much effort. <laughs> but you can follow us there too, Geekaholics as well. Um, most importantly, um, uh, share us with a friend, uh, recommend us to a friend and, or even more important, rate us on iTunes, um, and, uh, leave a nice review and hopefully, uh, help us discover more listeners. Cause you know, we like talking to you guys. And we want to continue talking to you guys. So, um, yeah, get the word out. Tell your friends. Thanks for listening. Uh, We will see you next week. Catch you later. Peace. Peace.